I'm reading from an article on the website called Christo La Verdad, Christ the Truth. This is about the Latter Rain Movement. This is part one in, a, in nine in a series called Unsound Doctrines. I'm sure these are all very good, and I will leave a link below. Sound doctrine is very important to God. In His Word, He directs us to teach it and hold fast to it. For that reason, it should also be important to us, and it needs to be guarded and contended for. More often, people depart from the truth because they did not have sound doctrine as their basis. We as Christians following the teachings of Jesus, sound doctrine, that are found in the Bible, unsound doctrine is the teaching that contradicts or disagrees with the word of God. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. That's 1 Timothy 4, 16. The Latter Rain Revival, a.k.a. New Order of the Latter Rain, 1947 to 1952, happened during two separate healing ministries of William Branham and Oral Roberts. In November of 1947, Oral Roberts claimed God appeared to him and directed him to heal the sick. Groups of people influenced by their teachings formed what is known as the Latter Rain Movement. They claimed this was the Latter Rain referred to in Jeremiah 3.3 3 and Joel 2.23 and Hosea 6.3. Leaders of the movement in Canada, influenced by Branham, were Percy Hunt and George Houghton, who preached British Israelism, among other errors. From the left, Young, Young Brown, Jack Moore, William Branham, Oral Roberts, James Gordon Lindsay. This is in Kansas City of 19, in 1948. First, William Branham. In 19, 1909 to 1965, Branham claimed that in May 7, 1946, he had an angel visitation to announce and later direct his healing ministry. He taught the serpent seed heresy and a doctrine found in Kabbalah, the Talmud, and Gnostic Gospel of Philip. He taught annihilation, annihilationalism, which is no hell, Predestination, he didn't believe in the deity of Christ, but kenosis, a Gnostic doctrine that says Jesus was not, was a man, not God, until baptism at 30 years of age, when God, Father alone, a spirit, indwelled him, a human body or tabernacle. Jesus was just a vessel carrying the divinity and performed miracles and died as a man. Pause. Remember, this is also being taught by Kenneth Copeland, Bill Johnson, Todd White, all these n gnarly um, prophets and Jesus, pastors. A carpenter's son, <coughs> physically speaking, when he come to the earth here, that's all he was known of, and the day that when John baptized him, God vindicated him. God spoke from the heavens. John saw him coming in the form of a dove and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am pleased to dwell. The right translation there is, In whom I am pleased to dwell in. Jesus immediately anointed with God. He was just a man till that time, but now he becomes the God-man. When God looked down upon the body, the Spirit left him, he had to die a man. Remember, friends, he didn't have to. That was God. God anointed that flesh with the human flesh. And he didn't, if he went up there as God, he never died that kind of death. Thank you, God. And Christ, well, he never, God was the same to the hell pure. He had to say the hell condemned. See, because he took our sins and Christ died, not righteous. Also, I'd like to remind or point out that um, having an angel is also something that the Freemasons get to do in the higher degrees. Just saying. 
I'm on a website called Dr. David Harrison. He is a historian of Freemasonry. This is about Freemasons and angels. Archangels have been mentioned over the centuries in various Masonic rites, and though they are more familiar to the magician who calls on them for protection, they have been summoned for similar use in certain Masonic rituals in the past, in an effort to commune with the divine. Freemason and writer Arthur Edward Waite discussed divination by the word of Uriel, the conjuring of demons and divination through the mirror of Solomon. The rather complicated ritual described by Waite led to the invocation of Uriel with a child working as a scryer. That's like the, the mirror, like in Lord of the Rings or your phone. Then being asked if he can see the image of the archangel in a file and await his communication. Uriel was said to appear in human form and was to bring whatsoever is desired with all tranquility and patience, without tumult, without detriment. According to Branham, Jesus was not eternal because he had a beginning. Branham didn't believe in the Trinity. He said, let me say this with godly love. The hours approached where I can't hold still on these things no more. Trinitarianism is of the devil, I tell you that, thus saith the Lord. Ask yourself this question, does God talk like that? Yet all these new apostolic reformation prophets and pastors love this guy. William Branham, Footprints on the Sands of Time, the autobi autobiography of William Marion Branham. Branham recognized P. Laurie Mathakrishna, Mathakrishna, as the fulfillment of Christ's second advent. Here he is. In the late 1950s, Branham began talking about speaking things into existence, and he created two squirrels. He said he created two squirrels. Okay, this is weird. He really did have a story about creating two squirrels, speaking them into existence. This is a little article from one of his cult websites, because he is a cult that still exists. It's from a recording that he made. Anyway, the part that's really weird is he's having, he's hearing this voice, and he calls it something. And something said, say what you will, and it shall be given to you. And I thought, what is that? Where are, where are you at, sir? And I heard it again. Ask what you will, and it shall be given unto you. I'm confirming the things that I will do. Now this gets even weirder. He says, And I said, But what should I? I thought, Who am I talking to? I felt like I had lost my mind. I thought, Who am I talking to? I don't see a person. Where's the light at? I usually, it usually is the one that talks. There's no light here. Who are you? What do you want? I thought, Something said, Ask what you will. Branham claimed he was Elijah, the last messenger of Laodicea, and the messenger of the covenant. He also taught that the word of God was given in three forms, the zodiac, the Egyptian pyramids, and the written scripture. That's from Al Dager's book, Vengeance is Ours, page 59. Oh yeah, and then there's the William Branham, Jim Jones connection. Happy to see today is our host pastor, Brother James Jones from Indianapolis back there, and many other friends that's sitting around. It certainly is a privilege today to speak to such a host of people who I am expecting to live an eternity with in glory. Death is a million times preferable to ten more days of this life. If you knew what was ahead of you, if you knew what was ahead of you, you'd be glad to be stepping over tonight. The Assemblies of God in 1949 officially rejected the latter reign Manifest Sons of God doctrine as heresy. Oral Roberts and William Brandon were not the first faith healers, but there were others before that influenced them. 
Branham was influenced by Franklin Hall and E.W. Kenyon and also claimed to be the successor of both Smith Wigglesworth and Alexander Dowie. This is Alexander Dowie and I will link some um, videos about him. He was definitely a cult leader. He did a lot of bad things. John Alexander Dowie, 1847 to 1907. In June 1888, Dowie comes to the United States and announces his presence as a healer by faith and a medium. His statements were recorded by a reporter for the San Francisco Chronicle. He declared himself to be Elijah, then John the Baptist, then the first apostle of the Restoration. He purchased land in Illinois and established the city of Zion, which had their own police, print shop, stores, bank, schools, no medicines. Dowie taught that healing is promised in the atonement, just like Bill Johnson. Strict mosaic dietary laws, etc. And the Christian Catholic Apostolic Church. The church schools in Zion taught the Flat Earth Doctrine. Dowie had Masons, for example, Edmund Ronan, lecturing at Zion, and he also lectured at Masonic Halls. They were considered a cult. Dowie was accused by his congregation of corruption and polygamy and was then succeeded by Wilbur Glenn Valiva, who was another vigorous advocate of Flat Earth Doctrine. James Gordon Lindsay was born in Zion, Illinois. His parents were disciples of John Alexander Dowie. He was Branham's first manager and the publisher of magazine Voice of Healing. He, together with Jack Moore, were part of Branham's team. Later Canadian, Ern Baxter, Branham's later campaign manager, and F.F. F. Bosworth joined the team. F.F. F. Bosworth, 1877-1958. He lived in Zion and served on John Alexander Dowie's cult. Bosworth held tent revivals during the 1920s. He and Branham met and became good friends, and both of them followed the teachings of E.W. Kenyon, a Methodist pastor who studied metaphysical and mind science and mixed it with Christianity. Bosworth and Dowie met Kenyon during a trip to Chicago. John G. Lake, a longtime associate of Dowie and deacon of his church, also lived and worked at Zion City for a time, and he frequently held healing sessions and gave sermons in Masonic lodges. Bosworth worked with J. Lake in establishing the Divine Healing Mission in Portland, Oregon. They became close friends. So pause here. We're just seeing all these early faith healer, word of faith guys, and their connection with Freemasons. And it really reminds me of this Alice Bailey quote that you've probably heard a million times, maybe, about how they're going to use Freemasonry and to bring the New Age through the church. I'll put that right here. There is no question, therefore, that the work to be done in familiarizing the general public with the nature of the mysteries is of paramount importance at this time. These mysteries will be restored to outer expression through the medium of the church and the Masonic fraternity when the Great One comes with his disciples and initiates we shall have the restoration of the mysteries and their exoteric presentation as a consequence of the first initiation. In 1947, when Latter Rain Revival started, the Fuller Theological Seminary was founder, founded by Charles E. Fuller, a radio evangelist and preacher, Harold Okegna. They were influenced by Branham's teachings and promoted dominionism. C. Peter Wagner was a teacher there for 30 years, 1971 to 2001. He was a professor of church growth movement and taught Dominion theology. Wagner was a head apostle of the New Apostolic Reformation that named their movement. In 1998, he founded Wagner University. Some famous Fuller alumni, Bill Bright, Rob Bell, Rick Warren, 
Richard Foster, John Piper, James White, etc. Fuller was the first evangelical seminary to accept LGBT student groups. They teach many doctrinal errors, for example, that hell is not literal. William Branham, Dowie, John Lake, etc. are revered by NAR apostles. Some of these apostles are and were Bill Hammond, Paul Kane, Kansas City prophet, worked with Branham and claimed worked with Branham's angel. His an Branham's angel. He laid the foundation for Mike Bickle's ministries. Mike Bickle of IHOP, John Arnott of Toronto Revival Curse, Randy Clark, I'm sorry, I added that. Randy Clark, Global Awakening Revival Alliance, Voice of the Apostle. They say he was the spark that started Toronto Revival. The Lord for a baptism of fire, haven't you? All of a sudden, this thing hit me. Ugh. And it felt like my chest was being stepped on. Are you sure you want this? Like See, I was gonna die. It felt like... Like I was gonna die. Like I was gonna die. It felt like electricity. Not just in my hands, it was all over my body. It started to go through my feet, through my fingers. And all of a sudden it hit me. I'm like, oh! And it wasn't like I was gonna say, they were gonna say be quiet. Uh, I said, oh! Right, he says, more oh, Lord. Just like that. I'm not kidding that I've been focusing on this thing that I didn't even know what it was. That I've been focusing on this thing that I didn't even know what it was. That quart of gasoline with the match. Because God's the one that lights the match. This quart is all of a sudden on me. And all of a sudden I'm just, help! No! Ah! I'm screaming. Those of you that want to be dignified and all pretty. <laughs> Bill Johnson, Bethel, Global Legacy, etc. Who is in the process of building a museum in their honor. The House of the Generals, saying that God told him that if he would honor Dowie, etc., then he would receive their anointing. Ew! Rick Joyner, Morning Star, John Wimber of Vineyard, Wagner called him pioneer of the New Apostolic Reformation, Todd Bentley. said, God, I've prayed for like a hundred crippled people, not one. He said, that's because I want you to grab that lady's crippled legs and bang them up and down on the platform like a baseball bat. I walked up and I grabbed her legs and I started going, be healed, be healed. I started banging them up and down on the platform. She got healed. And I'm thinking, God, why is not the power of God moving? He said, because you haven't kicked that woman in the face. And there's this older lady worshiping right in front of the platform. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face. With your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. BAM! And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of seem to collide in my mind. God wants to release, I believe, thousands of evangelists into the earth, into our nation. Mm. We've got an event coming up with Todd Bentley and just a whole bunch of people that are crying out for the same breakthrough. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're just believing together that God will use this to ignite something fresh and new. Who claimed to have received William Branham's mantle from Emma, William Branham's angel. Okay, pause. These angels are not angels. He's connected to Freemasonry. They work with angels, and when they're in high degrees, they get a special one. This would be a good time to insert a quote about that. When the dark side of Freemasonry begins to be revealed and discussed, the question invariably arises, does participation in Masonic rituals lead to demon invasion and control? C.W. Ledbetter answers that question for us most decisively from an insider's point of view. 
Ledbetter does more than give an affirmative answer to our question. He proceeds to describe the demon spirits he received in the various degrees of Freemasonry. The 30th degree brings its angel also of appropriate character, a great blue diva of the first ray. I'm going to skip. The 33rd degree links the Sovereign Grand Inspector General with the spiritual king of the world himself, that mightiest of adepts who stands at the head of the Great White Lodge, in whose strong hands lie the destinies of earth. Yet, when one of these bright spirits is attached to us by a Masonic ceremony, we must not think of him either as a director or as an attendant, but simply as a co-worker and a brother. How sweet. Bill Hybels, Willow Creek, James Gall, Lou Engel, The Call, The Send, Rodney Howard Brown, Brian Simmons. Remedios. Remedios. Flame of God. Heaven's flame. All right. Mas fuego. Mas fuego. Mas fuego. If you're Portuguese, fogo de Dios. Three of the last days. More, more. More, Lord. Put the mark of the Christ on us. Oh, let the mark of the Christ be upon our head and our hands. More. Put the mark of the Christ on us. Oh, let the mark of the Christ be upon our head and our hands. More. Is uh, calling for f in fuego fire to fall on people. Mm -hmm. There's a parallel with Revelation 13. And uh, he is calling on people to receive the mark of the Christ. We'll just say the anointed one here on their hand or their forehead. Yeah, let me back it up just a little. Listen again. Unveil in us the glory of the last days. More, more. More, Lord, put the mark of the Christ on us. Oh, let the mark of the Christ be upon our head and our hands. More, more, more. A seal of fire over our heart. More, more, we welcome the seal of God on our forehead. More. Fire. Flame of God. I'm sorry. The New Passion Bible. Brian and Bobby Houston from Hillsong. Ted Haggard. Rare Center. Steve Schultz. The Elijah List. Heidi Baker. Cindy Jacob. Cindy Jacobs, Chuck Pierce, Guillermo Maldonado, and Samuel Rodriguez. This is such a collection here. Here's Todd Bentley showing off his tattoos. Bentley claims that God told him to get the tattoos and piercings. But check Leviticus 19.28. No apostles disregard Bible doctrine because claim they are the new apostles, validated by their signs and wonders. All these apostles have umbrella organizations or apostolic networks that provide training, covering, and oversight to ministers, churches, schools, businesses, etc. In exchange, besides financial contributions, people are required to attend the Ecumenical School of Healing and Impartation and of Randy Clark or view the DVDs as well as reading books. Requirements which include five volumes of Supernatural, The Life of William Branham by Jorgensen, E.W. Kenyon, True Life Story by Joe McIntyre, and F.F. Bosworth book, Christ the Healer. They are prophesying a coming revival or second Pentecost, but this time will include Catholics and very possibly other faiths as well. Could a Mary apparition be on the way? Update. August 20, 2019. I just found out that Michael Brown, John Arnott, and other leaders of the Toronto and Pensacola revivals will be lighting the fire again for a Pensacola awakening on September 4 through 7, 2019. According to Cheon's account given at the Todd Bentley Lakeland outpouring in 2008, a revival alliance was formed in 2006 by 12 Apostolic Network leaders, Bill and Benny Johnson of Bethel Church, Heidi and Roland Baker, Iris Ministries. Right You're going to impart to each other 
So you're going to take it, you're going to put it on somebody else's head and watch and then say, more Lord. Whoa! More Lord. Everybody, place, place that anointing, that crown, that gift upon someone else's head. <laughs> Keep praying. Every single one of you, impartation, legacy, legacy. Place it on legacy. another one's head. Fire. <laughs> legacy, legacy. greatest thing you've ever seen in your life prophesy over them ten times more Lord. Georgian and Wendy, Winnie Banoff global Father, celebration you're carrying it so well my wife uh, has <laughs> laid on the grave of your grandfather several times along with many of us soaking that anointing in and we agree together Che and Sue on Harvest International Ministries, Randy and Deanne Clark, Global Awakening, John and Carol Arnott, Catch the Fire, formerly Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship. Don't they just look like a bunch of nice people? Here see Peter Wagner at an anointing service for Todd Bentley, Rick Joyner behind him, and John Arnott on his left. But our focus here in Florida every night is I lay hands on every single person that comes, whether it's 5,000, 10,000, and I'm praying, God, give it away, give it away, give it away. That's the focus here, impartation. Some are saying this is the most contagious anointing the world has ever seen. Just look at what people are receiving here and taking back to their own city and their own church. Here's what happened in Dudley, England, when the Lakeland anointing arrived there. And this was repeated all around the world in hundreds and hundreds of churches wherever this anointing went. Even Charisma magazine began to question some of what was going on. But that didn't stop the very biggest leaders in the charismatic movement from endorsing and promoting this movement. On June 23, 2008, they held a special commissioning ceremony for Todd Bentley live at Lakeland with the very biggest apostles and prophets of the charismatic movement. This is Peter Wagner, the head apostle of the entire charismatic movement worldwide. And here's Rick Joyner, the top prophet of the movement. This commissioning represents a powerful spiritual transaction taking place in the invisible world. With this in mind, I take the apostolic authority that God has given me and I decree to Todd Bentley, your power will increase, your authority will increase, your favor will increase. Your influence will increase. Your revelation will increase. Of course, only weeks later, Todd Bentley's movement completely fell apart. And no amount of Stacey Campbell shaking her head was going to change that fact. And receiving the tablets came after Numbers 24. Just a few weeks later, on July the 9th, ABC Nightline had a special on Todd Bentley and the Lakeland Revival. Little did we know this would be the beginning of the end of the revival. Can you supply us with three people who have been cured through miracle with their medical diagnosis, their names? But we never got three. Instead, we were given a binder filled with what Bentley says are stories of inspiring miracles. It offered incomplete contact information, a few pages of incomplete medical records, doctors' names were crossed out. And so, not a single miracle claim of Bentley's could be verified. But then came even more shocking news. Todd Bentley was separating from his wife. He'd apparently been having an affair with a female staff member even while the revival was going. And of course, at this point, the entire revival collapsed.
And here we have some charismatic leaders like Kenneth Copeland, Mike Bickle, Chris Ballatin from Bethel Church with the Pope. According to NAR Apostles, we need to learn how to restore the blessing of our lost biblical inheritance by embracing the Jewish, Jewish roots of our Christian faith. As you can notice, the roots of these groups are not good at all. Today, these different groups that promote Gnostic doctrines, NAR, Word of Faith, Hebrew Roots, Neo-Calvinist, Emergence, etc., are merging together and aligning with the Pope to form the New World Religion. They know many Christians will never submit to the Roman Pope. For that reason, I believe big changes are coming soon to the Catholic Church, and then we'll witness even the greatest apost apostasy when many will abandon their faith in God for Gnosis, esoteric knowledge. O oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. Gnosis, 1 Timothy 6.20 The Word of Faith movement was also developed during this time. In late 1940s, under the teachings of Kenneth Hagin, said, Every man who has been born again is an incarnation, and Christianity is a miracle. The believer is as much an incarnation as was Jesus of Nazareth. Accused of plagiarizing many of E.W. Kenyon's work as his own. This article is so good. If you clicked on all these links and read and watched the videos and the articles, you would know everything you need to know. And you would never have to watch any more of my videos. But this one on E.W. Kenyon, it really goes into detail about Kenneth Hagin completely plagiarizing, nearly word for word, his, his writings. Oral Roberts and T.L. Osborne both worked with Branham and followed in the teachings of E.W. Kenyon. They also taught Dominion theology, among other doctrines of prosperity, positive confession, faith healing, etc. Some of their followers, Catherine Coleman, inner faith healer, Paul Crouch, I am God, Paul Crouch, TBN. Well done tonight. This hue and cry and controversy that has been spawned by the devil to try and bring dissension within the body of Christ, that we're gods. I am a little God. Yes. Yes. I have his name. I'm one with him. I'm in covenant relation. Yeah. I am a little God. Critic, you are God. anything. And if Copeland, who also thinks he's God, was Oral Roberts' student and personal pilot. Read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. Benny Hinn, Joyce Meyer, Joel Osteen, James Robison, Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, etc. Doctrines that came from the Latter Rain Movement. The Dominion Mandate. The church is to possess the land and rule on earth before Christ can return. They claim Jesus cannot return until all his enemies have been put under the feet of the church. I know when Jesus is coming back. When we bring him. It's the church that determines when the end comes, not the devil. God is not coming to conquer his enemies. Jesus not, is not coming to conquer his enemies. He's sat down until his enemies are already made his footstool. And when that job, when that task is complete, then Jesus will be released to return. See, they are putting themselves or the church in the place of Christ. That's what that is. Okay, this is huge. This is so huge. Who is ruling and reigning when Jesus Christ returns? It is the Antichrist. So... He is coming to destroy the Antichrist and his kingdom with the breath of his mouth. They believe they're going to be ruling and reigning when Jesus returns. So what does that tell you? We really need to check our Bibles. They believe they're overcoming. The Bible says that the Antichrist is going to overcome the saints. 
okay? Until Jesus comes back and destroys him, or else no flesh will be saved. There will be no flesh left. They're building the Antichrist kingdom. Just being honest, this, this hurts my heart and my brain. It really does. Restoration of the Apostles and Prophets they need the need of the fivefold ministry at the top of a leadership pyramid and submission to elders shepherding to bring about the perfecting of the saints new and extra biblical revelations that supposedly god tells them like prosperity gospel sowing seeds spiritual exercises to hear god's voice sean bolts shannon johnson mark verkler etc contemplative prayers and the teaching that Jesus needed to be born again there are a lot of links here there's a video for that I don't know did you know that Jesus was born again Jesus was born again he had to be he became sin why did he need to be begotten or born because he became like we were separated from God because he tasted spiritual death for every man and his spirit and inner man went to hell in my place he became sin he was made sin now he's in the pit of hell he's down there he's in there suffering like no man has ever suffered did you know God has never ever sent but one man to hell. His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ. He pays the price for us to be made right with God. Jesus goes to hell. I believe he went to Hades, went down and descended into the depths of the earth for three days and he pays for the sin of mankind. Physical death wouldn't remove your sins. He's tasted death for every man. He's talking about tasting spiritual death. Jesus is the first person that was ever born again. Why did his spirit need to be born again? Because it was estranged from God. He was born through Mary the first time and through the resurrection the second time. He was born Okay, no, I'm saying this as your friend. If that does not make you sick to your stomach, you need to check yourself. You need to test your faith. And you need to get into the Word of God. That was so much blasphemy there, I can't even begin. I just can't. And the teaching that Jesus needed to be born again. Or the doctrines found in the Talmud and Kabbalah, i.e. that Adam was a hermaphrodite or bisexual and that God is androgynous, both male and female. Please see video, Chris Fallatin, Senior Associate Pastor of Bill Johnson Bethel Re Church in Redding, California. First point I'd like to make in this conference really is that God made you after his kind and God made Adam, the word Adam and the word man, Hebrew word, it's the same exact word. He made Adam both male and female, as you know. How many know God's not a man? Right, right, right. God's both male and female, and if you oppress women, if you oppress women, then you, then you, then you, you reduce the revelation of God by 50%. Wow. wow. It, took man, it took a man and a woman Mine. to demonstrate the revelation of who God is. Yep. Very good. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon man, and he slept, and God took one of his ribs and closed up with his flesh there, and the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man. And God brought her to the man, and the man said, Now, um, the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of the man. 
Yeah. Where was the woman? In the man. Out of, he was taken yeah. out of man. The woman was in the man. Yeah. 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 For, you know, if there was a few men in there's a few men in here. You can't get in touch with your feminine side because you don't have one. <laughs> the woman was taken out yeah. of the man. So where right. was the woman? In the man. She was in the man. Yeah. So God took Adam and said, okay, here's how I'm going to make sure you no longer feel lonely. I'm going to take you and I'm going to break you in half. I'm going to take the feminine side of you and I'm going to remove it from you. And when Adam woke up, I'd like to suggest that he immediately knew that something was missing because he was both male and female at one point. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because the woman was taken out of the man. Right. Unity of all believers, including Catholics and mystics. Necessary and vital, they say, since Jesus cannot incarnate into a divided body. Healing and prosperity are promised in the atonement, and also we can speak things into existence. Spiritual warfare, spiritual mapping, trips to mountains like the Everest, libations, etc. The believers must topple the heavenly powers and take their place in order to rule over the earth. Because underlying all of this is the Luciferian belief that you shall be as gods. That is what's underlying this. Even if they aren't aware of it, that is what is, that's what it is. A rejection of premillennial doctrines. They do not believe in the millennial reign of Christ, nor the classic understanding of the rapture, the tribulation, the second coming, and the millennium. They don't want Christ to be ruling and reigning. They want to be ruling and reigning. I am speaking of the powers that shouldn't be at the top of this religion mountain of influence. I'm not talking about all the people underneath. But that is what they want. They want to be ruling and reigning, not Jesus. Rapture of the wicked, i.e. taken in judgment, and the church will eventually overcome death itself in a counterfeit of the rapture explained as a feeling of excitement caught up emotionally when the Lord returns to receive the kingdom from our hands. At that time the kingdom will not be in our hands, the church. It will be in the hands of the Antichrist. So they are putting themselves in that place. This is so inverted. Manifestation of the sons of God. They are the mighty army of the Lord, a.k.a. Joel's army. Those in the body who are perfected by the works of their apostles and prophets and brought literally to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. These will receive their final redemption, the immortalization of their carnal bodies, and they will have every right to be called gods. That Bill Hammond said that. Here's a quote by Bill Hammond, father of the modern prophetic movement. Jesus will come back to earth and be given the kingdom that has been won for him by this man-child company, Joel's army. The manifested sons of God doctrine teaches that these sons will be equal to Jesus Christ, immortal, sinless, perfected sons who have partaken of the divine nature. They will have every right to be called gods and will be called gods. Let that sink in. They will have every right to be called gods and will be called gods. Okay, this right here, this is the root of everything. This is why this whole movement is always talking about taking authority and ruling and reigning and taking dominion and the seven mountains. They are putting themselves in the place of God. Those are his attributes. This is the same thing the New Age teaches about ascending and becoming God. It's the same thing Freemasonry t teaches. This is why they're so hung up on all this stuff and the dominionism and all that. And Trump being president. The signs and wonders manifestations of gold dust, feathers, gems, diamonds, dripping oil, stigmata, etc., in their meetings and congregations, which reminds me of some of the manifestations seen in Virgin Mary's worship and cults. Remember, Jesus said, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. John 4, 48. And an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. Matthew 12, 
39. Seeking after signs and wonders is not a good thing, but it is a lack of faith. The Antichrist is a spirit, not a person. That's what they believe. The Antichrist is a spirit, not a person. And hell is not literal. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Matthew 24, 24. That can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus.